nothing it's just uh, it came apart you know it's just like little pieces of moose dust in is going on so I'm gonna try to fill it up with something and I have nothing here in the middle of the woods and I don't want to put wood in there right so I'm gonna fill it up with that old t-shirt uh, yeah I'm gonna put that t-shirt in there just to fill up that gap so this moose is still gonna work so yeah let's put the t-shirt in there and and then uh, put the tire back on and go on and enjoy another uh, 100 miles I guess it all started with my last ride in Arizona uh, we did some fast roads with a couple of friends of mine and I brought the bike home and it was absolutely good didn't feel a problem with the moose in the tire but fast forward to preparing my bike for the Utah trip I am in Salt Lake right now and uh, changed the oil and ran the bike up and down the street uh, only to realize that I have a strange wobble. Oh wow, my, my tires are oval. Uh, I should have not rested my bike on the tires. These mooses don't like to sit. Oh yeah, it's oval. <laughs> I didn't think much of it because for 230 hours that moose never really caused any problems. You don't feel it on dirt, but uh, it creates a little lumpy side. You have to understand that my first impression was that maybe you know how the bike sat for about two weeks on the tires maybe they got a little bit of a, like a lump side and um, that's causing the problem is gonna go away maybe the the foam is gonna re-expand I'm gonna let the bike uh, settle uh, for the oil change and all that stuff so I put the bike in the back of the car and drove over here and um, we did hundred and fifty miles Fish Lake National Forest has so much trail, we ran out of light. Um, by you trail, ran out of light, I got nothing except the phone. So, and I have tinted goggles. You can't see nothing. So I'm running on Jesus insurance. I right, let, let Jesus take the handlebars. Come on Jesus, do it, come on until yesterday on my way home after some gnarly single track some fast forest roads riding on the street a little bit because uh, we got lost and we had to ride on the street for about 20 miles um, I developed a very very strange wobble like even worse than before yeah, look at this is the wobble that I was telling you about in the front tire it's quite extensive Initially I thought it's in the front and I still think it's a little bit in the front but this is in the back when you lift the bike uh, the rear of the motorcycle and you start spinning the tire it has a very very strange wobble It's bad and if I go faster it goes worse push on the tire and try to feel it uh, you could clearly see that it's collapsed in some places it's collapsed so there is like absolutely no um, moose left but that's the beauty of the moose um, it has 200 hours 250 hours whatever I have on it and I put it um, in this tire and it still brought me home I had a wobble that I felt on the street but I never felt it on a single track I did 50 miles of single track and I had no idea that my moose is collapsed. Between the Arizona trip and checking my bike, uh, the bike sat in a garage for two weeks and it's Las Vegas in the middle of the summer. Outside we get 110, 120 temperature, which in Fahrenheit it's a lot, in, in Celsius is a lot. Um, but uh, because we put our cars in the garage too and the garage is not insulated, um, I've seen temperatures in my garage to about 150 could have contributed to the uh, collapse of the moose maybe it's just too hot because one of the things that the moose doesn't like is to get hot and 150 degrees it's quite hot also some of the things are self-inflicted wounds <clears throat> I put a moose that was fairly used it had like 200 hours on it um, there was a hundred and ten to an uh, hundred and twenty tire so I felt I had a gap but I loved the traction. I was absolutely in love with the traction. I just couldn't believe that air gap that I had in between the moose and the tire just gave that pattern on the tire on the ground that gave me absolute unbelievable traction. So as I said, that could have been a self-inflicted wound. And what I've done is I've uh, jimmy rigged something very, very interesting. Um, I've put a t-shirt in to fill up the gap. And that's the beauty of the moose. Um, you could fill up the gap with anything you want and 
you're going to have a functional bike and especially because we're going to do single track over here today um, I don't care it actually worked good yesterday I had an absolutely amazing traction um, so if that's the case you know you, you got to give it to the moose I got an entire season out of it but I ride a lot 200 and something hours on it that's a lot some people don't even ride that in, in three four five years so theoretically a moose will last you a long time so for those people that say well if you would have had a tube or you would have had other things um, you could have just throw another one in there and I could actually easily throw another one in there but I actually still prefer to have the collapsed moose in there uh, than the tube because on the tube I could have a pinch flat in the middle of nowhere and the collapsed moose doesn't collapse as a flat tire it just collapses as half the size and when it's half the size you still have like it feels like um, tubeless system at 5 psi so this moose is still gonna work so yeah let's put the t-shirt in there and and then uh, put the tire back on and go on and enjoy another uh, 100 miles I guess first ride on a t-shirt tire so uh, that's it I was gonna hold I'm not gonna take it easy right there's no testing involved because not like I could tell there's a t-shirt in there they're gonna push it hard and see how far it goes and take it out wash the t-shirt and wear it you know it's as simple as that so far feels great the t-shirt tire awesome traction is on half of the tire is amazing because I have no no pressure so half of the tire is just heaven and the other half is 10 psi so yeah and only on the street you feel it here you don't feel it at all the collapse moves is as good as it gets on the single track it's just it's psychological more than anything it's more than anything it's psychological and I'm trying to like not to break my rim so I'm taking it a little bit easier on the rocks because I really have nothing in there just hollow air but otherwise it's just as good as it gets I feel a little bit squishy in the back in some places what I hit just so and grippy it's the grippy part it's a little bit tricky because I have so much grip on the squishy part it's like a foot the, the, the footprint is like twice as big as the normal normal one but yeah collapse moves just buy another one run it and then you make two mooses out of one moose no we make a one moose out of the two mooses and you have moose forever run squirrel run oh yeah can you believe it I have a t-shirt in my tire that holds this bike together and the tire on the beat and all that stuff with whatever moose is left I'm just worried that it's gonna lump maybe I hope not so as long as it's not gonna lump into some kind of like a weird shape and form we're good today single track doesn't matter just does not matter oh good on the braking too just gotta protect it on the rocks a little bit that's it just gotta watch it on the rocks and I'm afraid that when I go into the water it's gonna get wet it's gonna get heavier and it's gonna vibrate but I don't go fast enough on a single track to 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 shake my the feelings out of my teeth so because it's not balanced at that point you know it's gonna be heavier on one side yeah it's this moose man moose 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 I was disappointed it broke but you know it is what it is So, back on the t-shirt, tire, 
Yep, great grip. The weather is better today than yesterday. It's a little bit colder, so. The bikes won't overheat as much. False neutral. 